Take that pamphlet out, turn there towards the back. It's a few pages in the back song there, Reach Our World. That is our opener this evening. If you would sing out on that, Reach Our World. Let's go reach our world. We'll sing the first, second, and last verse. Page 656, send the light. There's a call that's ringing on the restless way. Send the light.
Amen. It's good to be in the Lord's house again this evening, especially on this occasion for this cause. Let's pray. Lord, we're grateful for the work you're doing and the work you desire to do uh, this week. Thank you, Lord, for the way you encouraged and challenged us with the field update already tonight. Lord, I pray that you would meet with us in a special way in this service. We pray for our brother as he delivers the message in just a few moments. Give him a fresh anointing, Lord, and empower him to preach your word according to your will. And Father, I pray that we would respond according to your will. Lord, we are grateful for so many faithful families who are serving you across this nation and around the world. Lord, we're living in uncertain times, and we as your people should certainly be the first to recognize that you're the answer to these times. And so, Lord, I pray you'd help us to, to avail ourselves to your use in a fresh way tonight, uh, recommit ourselves, rededicate ourselves to you wholly. And, Lord, as we desire your direction about what we should do for missions in the coming year, I, I pray you'd give clarity and discernment there. Help us, Lord, to take the steps of faith you desire for us individually and then collectively as a church. We pray and ask these things in Jesus' name for his worthy sake. Amen. If you please remain standing. And page 615. Page 615. Joy in serving Jesus. Page 615. We'll sing the first, second, and last year also. Page 615. There is joy in serving Jesus. tonight. It's always good to see missionaries you supported for a while, and you, you kind of feel like you know them. I mean, you, we really don't know them, but we do. I mean, we're part of, they come and be with us, and, and they're part of our church, and we're part of what they're doing, and and uh, we pray for them, and, and uh, so in, in a sense, we, we have a relationship with them that uh, that's very special, so those, those presentations are good, and they certainly, the fellow giving the testimony, thanking us for sending uh, the mirrors to the field was heart touching, wasn't it? And then I, I thought also uh, about the uh, faith promise in itself. And, and a lot of folks, uh, I remember years ago, thought that faith promise was a gimmick. And, uh, it's certainly no gimmick. It's not only biblical, uh, but it, it's, it really is our part in fulfilling the Great Commission. 
For God told us to go into all the world and preach the gospel. Well, you and I can't go into all the world, can we? But we can send people into all the world. And so it's fulfilling, uh, personally, us fulfilling God's command. And, and it's a blessing to be a part of a church that takes that seriously. And uh, so let's have our ushers come. Again, the offerings this week go to uh, support the uh, outreach of the John and Romans to our community. I trust you give as unto the Lord. Brother Dave Roach, will you thank the Lord for the offering tonight? Gracious Heavenly Father, we're thankful, Lord, for this another time that you've had us together here tonight, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your many, many blessings, Lord. And Lord, for the presentation we heard tonight, Lord, we ask God that you'll just continue to bless there. Bless those people over there, Lord, that they might hear your word, Lord. And God, we pray, Lord, that you'll just lead and guide and direct here tonight, Lord, bless the preaching of your word as the folks come forth and preach your word, Lord. We ask God that you'll just touch each one of them as they deliver your message, Father, that the message will go, the message will go forth and reach hard hearts as well. Father, we pray and thank you for this offering tonight as you as it's taken up. We ask, Lord, you just bless the offering and it'll go toward your work. And we'll ask it in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen.
Holes that need rescuing. Thank you, Brother Chris, for that. Some of our online gang thought we were telling stories probably Wednesday night about him playing that thing with the mask on. You got to see it for real tonight. We, we were not uh, exaggerating. So that's a special mask he's got. So there you go. Grateful uh, for all the Lord's doing. I'll have our brother, if you go ahead and make your way up here, um, for all the Lord is doing. And you know, for many, many years, we've heard the common uh, cry for help or need for help, and that more missionaries are coming home than are going. I think we've heard, probably heard some about that even this week. There's always a need for, for uh, new, for young uh, people. people. We all get old, don't we? And I'm thankful that uh, in, a, in a time, uh, in a generation where many uh, young folk are compromising and going the way of popular uh, contemporary themes that we're blessed as a church to to have some young missionaries that are, are sold out to the Lord separated under Christ we're not any click or club but we're desiring to please the Lord and yeah. desire to do a work you know, for him I'm, I'm thankful that in this conference we've got uh, both we've got experience we've got uh, middle experience. We've got uh, about a first term. We've got one about ready to go. We've got one hoping he's about ready to go. I'm grateful for that. We've got several, if you will, uh, generational times here of these missionary families and where they are. And uh, it's exciting to see young people surrendered to go. Amen. And it's a great opportunity to be able to consider cooperating with them uh, to that end. And so we're grateful for our brother tonight and his, uh, his wife and their, their uh, young daughter. And so brother, Brother Seth, come, come preach to us. Thank you, Pastor, for the wonderful privilege to be here tonight to, to share with you what God laid on uh, my heart from, from his word. I don't think the mic's on, brother. Uh, is it on? Are we good to go now? My sake. Both the young and the old have problems. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm I'm starting to fall on the other side of the generation gap. <laughs> Thank you again for your attention tonight. Uh, now, my my name here. I'm, I'm Seth. I'm here with my wife Michaela and our daughter Sylvia. And uh, we don't have a, a cool last name that that. Uh, mimic something that we have in the world. I know there's a missionary family that is the coffees to Africa, so they, every time we take a drink of coffee, remember to pray for them. Uh, there's a brother McDonald is going to Spain, so every time we pass McDonald's, pray for him. But I don't have a cool name like that. Uh, but what I do have is our prayer cards, and so please stop by our display table because you'll need to see it written to remember it. Uh, and uh, We've got some other material there, trifle brochures, pens, and then some coins that replicate what used to be in Asia uh, from 1644 to 1911. I'd invite you to come by our uh, display table after service tonight, pick up some of that stuff, avail yourself of it, just so it can be reminders to you to pray for us. We appreciate your prayers as we're going into what is a spiritual battle. It is a spiritual battle between God and the devil, between right and wrong, between the gospel of salvation and uh, the kingdom of darkness. If you take your Bibles tonight and turn with me to the book of Matthew, we'll be looking at Matthew chapter number 11. Matthew chapter 11, we'll be looking at the last three verses of Matthew chapter number 11. Uh, tonight, uh, God helping me, uh, I'd like to just share this thought from these, these few verses dealing with the yoke and the burden of missions. The yoke and the burden of missions. If you found your spot there in Matthew chapter 11, we'll have a word of prayer and then read our text. Our Heavenly Father, as we come before you today, we ask that you will teach us from your word. Lord, I ask you to give me unction from on high, that you would bless me with your Holy Spirit. Lord, I ask that each one of us would prepare our hearts to receive a blessing, that each one of us would be anxious on the edge of our seat, looking for God, please bless us, suit a blessing to our heart. I know there's folks here that uh, 
Some are encouraged. Some are ready to serve you. There's others here that are hurting. There are others here that they're on the fence. Uh, they have not chosen what they're going to do with their life yet. And I ask God that in this, this hour, this short period of time, Lord, do a work in our heart. Do a, do a work where you draw us to your scripture, that you give us a holy love for you. And I ask that you will bless the reading of your word tonight. I ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Here in Matthew chapter number 11, if you look, at verse 28 to 30. Jesus says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Uh, my burden is light. And tonight, we're looking at the yoke and the burden. First off, we have the yoke. And I believe that the yoke speaks to obedience. The yoke here is uh, an instrument for farming. It is a tool that you would put over two oxen and it'd be connected up to their plow so that, that the, the yoke of oxen would, would pull the plow and make the furrow so that the farmer could sow his field so that the farmer can reap his crops. And he says, take my yoke upon you. Uh, there is an act here where we need to choose to take the yoke of God and put it around our necks. And so by humbling ourselves to, to put our neck, our head, our mind, our direction under the yoke of God, I believe it speaks to obedience. I believe there's four general areas here that we can look at and identify as needing to be obedient to God, needing to be obedient to Jesus Christ. The first one here is in regards to salvation. We need to take upon us the obedience of salvation. Over in Mark chapter number 1, Mark chapter number 1, verse 14 and 15, it says, now after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Repent ye and believe the gospel. That is a command. As Jesus came preaching, he preached with the command to repent and believe the gospel. In 1 Peter 4.17, it speaks on this wise. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God, and if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? Now, the gospel is an act that took place within history. The gospel is the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ for our sins. Amen. No more, no less. Regardless of whether we receive the gospel or not, it doesn't change the gospel. Whether or not we say a prayer and accept Christ as our Savior, it does not change the gospel. The, the gospel is factual. The gospel is, is an act in history regardless of what we do with it. But the gospel expects a response. The response that is expected to the gospel is obedience, to believe in Jesus Christ, to turn or repent from our sins and turn to have faith in God. And the first thing we need to see here is that we need to obey the gospel. There are some here that maybe you're sitting here and you've never obeyed the gospel. You know what it is, but you've never been willing to submit your neck to God. You've never been willing to say, my family Christian heritage won't get me to heaven. My good works won't get me to heaven. I will obey the gospel to believe and repent for my sins. Uh, secondly here, uh, we see that uh, the yoke speaks to the obedience of surrender. When you're putting your neck in the yoke, you are surrendering that wild ox inside of you. You are surrendering the, the wild side to just go as you please, to do as you want. It is to be submitted unto God, to be surrendered under his yoke. Over in Romans chapter number six, we look at the believer surrendered. In Romans chapter number 6, verses 1 through 4, it speaks on this wise. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? 
Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. In verse 11 and 14, it also says this, of Romans chapter 6, verse 11 through 14, Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. We first need to see that this yoke speaks to the surrender of our passions and pride. It speaks to the surrender of our sin. That we will consider ourselves dead to sin, dead to the world, dead to our flesh, and say, God, I'm going to be alive to you. Whatever you want from me, you name the cost. I'm giving you a blank check. I've signed it, you fill it. Uh, I've given you a blank contract. I've signed it, you fill it. What do you want with my life? I will be anything you want me to be. I will do anything you want me to do. And I will go anywhere you want me to go. Yeah. That is the surrendered life that God has called us to when he says, Take my yoke upon you. Yeah. Take my yoke upon you. It is a command that expects obedience. Over in uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Paul also wrote in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. Uh, let me turn there, because I just blanked on it. I was on a roll, and I slipped off like butter. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. But Paul, he said, count yourselves dead. Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. I count myself dead. Uh, the part of the surrender here is counting ourselves dead to ourselves, dead to our sin, but alive to God. The third thing here that the yoke speaks to in our obedience is our sanctification. If you would turn with me to 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4. And we'll be looking at verse number 3. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse number 3. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3 through 7 speaks on this wise. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor, not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know not God, that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter, because that the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also have forewarned you and testified. For God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. We read in 2 Timothy chapter 2, in a section where Paul lists some, some sins for Timothy to abstain from, he says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 21, If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified in me for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. And God wants to do a work in our life. God wants to use us. He wants to use you. Uh, but God is looking to use vessels who are holy, vessels who are clean, vessels who will be surrendered to him and say, Lord, whatever you want from me, I will do it. But then God's also looking for vessels who will put away the sin and turn from the wickedness and present themselves unto God as this clean, holy vessel that God can choose to use. How many of you have been to a restaurant and got a dirty plate that you just sent it back to the kitchen because it was nasty? <laughs> Thankfully, I've never been in that situation. But if I got uh, seated uh, at a, a place or, or went to a place before COVID-19 where you could actually go to a buffet and if you, you had a, that stack of plates next to the buffet and it's all got caked up crumbs on there, would you want to go through line and use that? No. You know, God can use that. We can use a dirty plate, right? But we don't want to. And part of that's uh, God's nature in us. Uh, God can use dirty vessels. 
uh, our brother the other night mentioned how God used Pharaoh uh, to magnify the power of God. He used Pharaoh in a negative fashion. I believe he was speaking in the chapel the other day. He mentioned that. Uh, so God can, but he doesn't want to. God delights and chooses to use clean vessels for the most part. And this yoke speaks to our need for sanctification. But lastly here, the, the yoke of obedience speaks to our service. If you would turn with me back to Romans chapter 6, and we'll finish out the rest of that chapter that we are reading there in Romans chapter number 6, beginning at verse 15, down through the end of the chapter. And I just want you to notice with me, here in this, this short passage of verses, how many times God speaks to our service. Yield yourselves as servants. Give yourself as service to God. Romans chapter 6, verse 15 to the end. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? God forbid. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. But God be think that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members servants to righteousness unto holiness. For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I hope that you get the, the picture here that God is looking for servants. God is yeah. looking for people, not just servants in name, but people who will render service, who will act upon uh, the word of God, who will act in obedience to God. The yoke here speaks to our obedience. Now there is this, the second side of this. Jesus said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now before we move on to the burden, I just want to point out here that, that Jesus says, my yoke is easy. My burden is Light. He says, Ye shall find rest unto my souls. It, the, the, the wages of sin is hard. The wages of sin is death. Um, iniquity is hard. It, it's hard on people. If you look at someone who has smoked and done drugs, oftentimes their, their facial features are just marred to, to years beyond their age. Sin is hard on these physical bodies. Uh, sin is so hard on these physical bodies that we just <clears throat> and die one day. Uh, it's, the, it's the consequence, right? But Jesus said, you come to me. You be employed in my service. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. You will find rest into your souls. Now Jesus did say, you know, yea, all who live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. There's going to be times where we face trouble. There's going to be times where we face trials. But it's easy to walk with God. It's at least a whole lot easier to walk with God than to walk against Him. So moving on here to the, the, uh, the burden. The burden. I started off by, by mentioning that uh, this yoke was used as a, a farming instrument that would be put over two yoke of oxen to go and plow a field. And so I believe that in the immediate context, we're not talking about a burden of the heart. It's not talking about being overburdened with cares or anxiety. But we're talking about the labor of love. The labor of love. This burden is something that we're called to pull. This burden is something we're called to push ahead, dragging, if you would. This burden speaks to love and labor. Jesus said in John 3, 16, uh, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. God so loved the world. 
In Luke 19.10, Jesus said, For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. And then we have here in Matthew chapter 22, Matthew chapter 22, verse 36 and 40, Matthew chapter 22, verse 36 through 40, uh, a man comes to Jesus and asks him in Matthew chapter 22, verse 36, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Verse 37, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. This burden, I believe, is, is the, the labor of love. And this love is a love for souls. It's a, it's a love for humanity. It's a love for a fellow man. And I'll just be honest with you, be very frank with you, that there are some people that they are unlovable. There are some people that they're, they're harder to love than others. But love is a choice. We choose to love. And we only have that power to choose to love because God's loved us. Let's get that straight. If it wasn't for God's great love for us, we'd just be out to be selfish. But because of God's love toward us, we are empowered to love other people. We're empowered to love our enemy. We're empowered to love the unlovable. And, and secondly, in this love, God has called us to labor. It is a labor of love. In John 20, 21, Jesus said, As my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. Over in Mark chapter 16, verse 15, Jesus says, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And uh, let me just say this. How can you love your fellow man the most? It's by sharing the gospel. You love your fellow man the most when you share the gospel. Why? Because the gospel has the power to secure to that man the greatest blessings in heaven and on earth. Right. You can give your neighbor a car, and it'll help him during this life. You can give your neighbor a house, and it'll help him through this life. You can give your neighbor a million dollars, but it'll only help him in this life. But you give him the gospel, you're able to secure to him the peace of God. You are able to secure to him the love of God. You are able to, to secure for him a mansion built in heaven for him. You are able to secure his eternal state in the presence of our Savior. And so you have no greater way to show the love of God to your fellow man than when you share the gospel with him. And so this burden here, it is a burden of the labor of love. Now in this, combining for our last point here, the yoke and the burden. The yoke speaks to obedience. The burden speaks to the labor of love or work. But together, together the yoke and the burden together speaks to fellowship. The yoke and the burden together speaks of fellowship. A yoke is used for two oxen. If you had one oxen, you wouldn't need a yoke. But we got two oxen, so we need a yoke. Who's in the other side? You said, take whose yoke? My yoke. Take whose burden? My burden. So when we submit our neck into this yoke of God, it speaks to fellowship. Jesus is right there in it with us. Amen. Jesus is the one that is doing the steering, if you would. Jesus is the one uh, carrying the bigger part of that weight. we got to be there and plod alongside him. But it's God's power that comes upon us with the Holy Ghost. It is God's labor to work in the cold, dead hearts, to, to quicken them and make them alive and, and receptive of the gospel. It is God that is uh, laboring. It says in 1 of the Corinthians that for we are laborers together with God. Amen. You're God's husbandry. You're God's building. And when we put our neck to the yoke, we labor with God. Uh, it speaks in Matthew chapter 28, verse 20. 
I'm sure you're familiar with this passage by now, hopefully, being Missions Conference. But Matthew 28, 20 says that we're to be teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. It is recorded in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5, for I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. I believe that is one of the greatest assurances. When we put our neck to the yoke, when we put our body and our labor to this burden, we have the assurance that God will be with us in it. Just want to give some closing thoughts here. The yoke speaks to obedience and salvation and surrender and sanctification and service. And it speaks to obedience in that, in that specific order. You can't serve God very well if you're not a clean vessel. And you won't be a clean vessel until you first surrender your life to him. But there's no point in trying to surrender your life or give your life to God until you're willing to obey the gospel. And you might be here today at any one of those points. Maybe you're here today and you're not saved. Tonight's the night to get saved. Maybe you're here tonight and you're saved, but, but you're living your own life. And you need to make the decision, God, I'm going to surrender myself to you. Maybe you're here tonight and you said, Lord, uh, I, I'm kind of surrendered to you, but you've got a lot of sin that's left in your life. There's a lot of old habits that need to die. There's a lot of old habits that God is asking you, be cleansed, be clean. I want a pure heart. I want a holy heart. I want to work in you. I want to work through you. But you need to let God do some cleansing tonight. Maybe you're here tonight and, and you, you're, you're saved, you're surrendered, you're, you're sanctified, and you're just waiting. Then the moment God gives you a task to do, do it cheerfully and willingly. Be ready to serve him. Maybe God has already laid something on your heart where God has asked you to serve, but maybe you're afraid. Maybe you're uneasy. Maybe you're, you're unsure how it's going to inconvenience your schedule. I assure you, that Jesus' yoke is easy and his burden is light. You will find rest to your soul when you willingly obey him. And this burden is a burden that we're to carry together, but especially it's a burden that we carry with the Lord. We show to our fellow man our greatest love when we share the gospel. I just want to caution you with, with a verse from Nehemiah chapter number 3, verse 5, regarding uh, some people who refused to put their neck to the yoke. When Nehemiah went back to build the walls of Jerusalem, uh, there was a lot of people that they, they jumped in, they were inspired. In Nehemiah chapter number 3, it's a whole list of names, which is it's an amazing passage. I've preached from it multiple times on teamwork, people with the diverse skills and abilities coming together in the work of the Lord. But in Nehemiah chapter 3, verse 5, right in the middle of would be a great teamwork passage, in Nehemiah chapter 3, verse 5, it says, And next unto them the Tekoites repaired, but their nobles put not their necks to the work of their Lord. There are some people here who you haven't taken on the yoke of God because you don't want to do God's work. You're still enjoying your pleasures of sin for a season too much. There's some people here who you've taken the yoke, but you're not pulling the burden yet. You've said, God, uh, I'm saved, sanctified, set apart, want to serve you, but you're saying it, but you're not pulling the burden yet. And tonight's the night where we need to dedicate ourselves once again, Lord, I want to put my neck in the burden. I want to pull alongside you. I want to be obedient to be anything you want me to be, to do anything you want me to do, to go anywhere you want me to go. Lord, I don't know what all that means, but I've just given you my body, giving you my mind, giving you my heart. Lord, please use me. Tonight, as we have considered the yoke and the burden of missions, it's a choice, primarily. People talk about having a burden for lost souls or, or having this feeling there's a choice that comes before the feeling in God's plan here. But I tell you, you give your heart of love to God, and God will give you his heart of love for people. Right. Mm -hmm. There are places in the world that 
the natural man says, I don't love them. I don't want to go minister to them. But you just love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. God will pour his love into your heart and enable you to love the unlovable. So I challenge you tonight, put your neck in the yoke. Start pulling the burden. Do it with your strength, and God will be with you. Our Heavenly Father, as we come before you tonight, we ask your special blessing upon the reading of your word. Lord, let it do a work in our heart tonight. Lord, I don't know where each member here tonight stands with the yoke of obedience, but I ask that wherever they're at, that they'd be willing to take the next step. Whether it's for salvation, whether it's surrender, whether it's sanctification, whether it's service. Lord, I ask that you'll give each one of us a greater heart for missions tonight. Lord, help us to, to take courage that in this yoke you're with us. That in this yoke it's light, it's easy, and there's rest. Lord, I ask that you will bless us this evening. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Pastor.